we going? Um, California. California. Yeah. Let's go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> guys welcome to another episode of the rusty beauties restorations and the 1994 mazda miata nick and elin yakov today we're gonna continue working on our brakes so in the last episode we changed some brake lines we bled the brakes actually we made some more progress but we haven't shown you that yet so we're gonna start with that so uh, yeah without further ado let's get crackalacking So, now you can stop we just need to make you start <laughs> um anyway we're done with the brake system with uh the brake lines but i still want to take the calipers out we want to clean the bores like i said and lubricate everything change the pads make sure that the discs are good i know they look bad they're rusty but they're nice and smooth there's no grooves or anything so they're gonna polish once we put the new brakes and he starts driving but anyways let's see if we're gonna have enough room in this video for the calipers or not so we're gonna take this caliper out and we're gonna service it the level of the fluid now is low but we're actually gonna keep it there because now when we're replacing the brake pads we're gonna have to push the piston of the caliper back in which is gonna push brake fluid back into the master cylinder so we need to leave room for that so i'm not gonna top it up from here the level is gonna go up not down <laughs> the idea is first of all to change the brake pads but second to make sure that right here these bolts are actually long pins that travel inside the caliper carrier we have a bore inside and that travels back and forth so this entire part of the caliper moves back and forth relative to this part so this way we achieve pressure on both sides of the disc with just one cylinder so when this cylinder presses here that pushes on this brake pad on this side but of course it pushes itself away from the disc and the motion of the caliper going that way is what pushes on this brake pad so that's pretty smart because the old style calipers had two cylinders on both sides so they can push on both sides here we achieve pressure on both sides with only one cylinder do you understand it okay we're gonna take it apart now and nick is gonna understand it better <laughs> okay. now before we go too far then we're gonna try to close the piston a little bit to allow us to pull out the caliper because now it's squeezed yeah, yeah as long as there's very little distance we can take it out okay so you see this is the pin the bolt the threads end here mm -hmm. And now this is the part that slides inside yeah. this bore. It, yeah. it allows it to travel back and forth. But yeah. you see, it's all rusted. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to clean. We want to get rid of the rust. We're going to... Can we clean the insides? Yeah, yeah we're going to clean the insides. And we're going to lubricate it. We're going to put grease. And we're going to make sure that it slides nicely. Otherwise, the caliper gets seized in yeah. one place. And you wear one pad more. Yeah. Or it seizes at the top but not at the bottom so it so twists yeah it is That's important that this is solid also these boots here so we're gonna have to find have to buy boots for here because these are important they yeah. protect they keep water from going in between the boat yeah the pin and the thing but these look like they're bad so we're gonna have to buy some we're gonna have to take this apart one more time 
So maybe we should just leave it for next time, because when we are doing the suspension, that's when we should do caliper by caliper, I think, you know, because we're going to have to do it again after. But anyway, now we started here, let's do it. Bad. So this is the piston, that's what travels, but now it was fully open, so these pads look like they're new. I want to make sure that the piston travels freely, but I don't want to press the brake pedal because it's going to be too much. Yeah, this is ripped. And this is ripped. So we're going to need new ones of this. Okay, can we just push on the brakes, but very, very gently, like slow, because if you push too hard, this piston is just going to jump out. Okay. Yeah, you can feel it moving. Push more. Yeah, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. More, keep going, keep going, keep going. Is it pressed all the way? No. Keep going then. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, go okay, now you're maxed out. Then pump it a few times now, normally. Okay. Enough, enough, enough. Okay. <laughs> so it came out a lot. Let go. Yeah, let go. I'm trying to squeeze it back. <laughs> I told that you let go. Okay, this boot here is still good, which is good. <coughs> now I can push it back. <laughs> okay, these brake pads actually are not bad. Let me take this one out first. How do they come out? Oh, okay, on an angle. Yeah, these are good brake, brake pads, actually. They're not worn, they're different. Inner and outer are different. Um, let's see if we're gonna be able to return the disc now, because... Not the disc, the piston. In your place, like, the front left brake pads, do you have to re replace the front right? Yeah, it's a good idea to replace all of them at the same time. At least front and yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, front and back. Okay, so let's see if we're going to be able to return it now. Yeah, it's coming back in. You can use a carpenter's clamp or something. But there you go, it came back in. So, I'm just going to let it hang by now, for now. And we're going to take care of this bore. And we're going to assemble it again with the old pads. Because we're going to have to come back and deal with these boots and now we're gonna go clean these on the wire wheel okay so i apparently wasn't recording but we lubricated inside here and we cleaned the pins of course so now they travel nice and tight we are assembling it now with the old pads and everything we're not lubricating i was just explaining to nicole that you need to lubricate here as well where the pads travel because there's these stainless steel channels that they usually come with the new pads we'll see if our pads have it There you go. So now you see the caliper has this movement. Yeah. And now you have space between the piston and the brake pads. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you change the brakes, you push it too far out and now you have space. So always when you change brakes, pads, you have to go and press the pedal like a few times, you pump, mm -hmm. to make sure that the piston comes out yeah. and hits the brake pad yeah. and it is ready. So the next time you press the pedal, it actually squeezes on the caliper. Because if you don't do that, when you start driving the car, you're gonna press the pedal, but you're not gonna apply the brakes because yeah. the piston is gonna move a little bit yeah. and then you have to let go and pump again yeah. and pump again. So that's dangerous. So always when you change brake pads, sit down and pump a few times. Mm -hmm. So do it now.
Is that going on? Okay. Pressing? Yeah. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, so it's the next day and I ordered the rubber boots for the calipers. So we're not gonna continue with the calipers today. We're gonna continue with something else. So we came in Nick's room here where he stores his parts and we went through everything to see what we have. So we have all the shocks. We're gonna deal with them at some point. And I just divided all the parts here in uh, front and rear. So this is all the rear suspension parts and all the front suspension parts. And we made a list here. So that's what we have. For the front, we have the sway bar links and bushings. By the way, we have a upgraded sway bar that somebody donated to Nick, but we don't have any hardware for it. So we might swap it in the future. For now, we're just gonna uh, rebuild the suspension as it is. What else we have here? The upper ball joints, the lower ball, ball joints, the tie rod ends, the upper control arm bushings, the lower control arm bushings. And we need to order steering boots and mounts. That's what we don't have for the front. Um, so I think we're going to work on the rear today because we don't have much time. So we're going to see some small job and then next week we're going to continue with uh, in the front or we will see what we're going to continue with so for the rear we have the upper control arm bushings and the lower control arm bushings we have a bushing kit for the rear sway, sway bar we don't have new links but we have bushings for the old links so we're going to replace those and i just want to check the boots for the cv joints today if they are good because uh we don't have them but if we need them i need to order those so I think we should grab the sway bar. This is the rear sway bar kit and we should do that today. Okay, so Nick is gonna start removing the sway bar, the rear one. Uh, we're gonna bring also the links that we have because we have one set of links and now when I'm looking at the front and the rear links, I'm not really sure which ones we have for front or rear, but we have new ones for one of the sets. Anyways, oh Nick, we have to put this back, the plastic. Yeah. So that's another job that you need to do. So Nick is gonna go around now and he's gonna spray WD-40 everywhere here and on the mounting brackets here. And then he's gonna try to undo them. I'm gonna start dealing with these. So I need to make this bracket multiple times so we have three four at least four of these brackets i need to make so we have one survivor all the other ones were super rusted so how it works it's very interesting actually so there's a this hole here is square so we can turn it there's a locking thing here so you need to lift a little bit but when you turn it 45 you can take it out <laughs> And then again, put it in, turn it, and it locks in place. So now I'm gonna go get my square drill bit and we're gonna drill some square holes. boat is spinning and interferes you see your socket is not deep enough okay. so the head of the boat interferes with the thing so take a deeper socket because this way is much easier to round the head and you don't want to round the head because you're going to be in trouble now be careful because it might pop down so keep your head out of there Okay, so it was under tension a little bit. All right, unfortunately I don't have a square drill bit, so we're gonna have to deal with the round one. 
and then square the hole. But that's a perfect job for a mule, right? And I do have a mule, but it is a late mule combo. So that's one of the negative sides of the late mill combo that when you need a mill you have to remove everything that's related to the late i need to remove the compound from here bolt a vise and then use this as a moving table for the mill and when it is for a big job it is worth but when it is for something like that it is like i'm gonna spend more time setting up the mill than just Taking up, taking a file and filing the round hole into a square. So, I'm just gonna use a file. Wow, it's a baby soy bar. <laughs> okay, so we have to keep track of it. So that's the left side. So we have to remember to put it with the taper down. Okay, good job. Thank you. Okay, so these we're not gonna use, we're gonna save them, but for some other purpose, we have new ones in the kit. So the sway bar itself, you can wire wheel, and the links, can you bring the new ones so we can see if they are the rear ones or the front ones. In case we not, in case they're the front ones, then we're gonna have to wire wheel these as well get rid of these bushings etc okay so here's the new links that we got and i just measured them and they are 100 and 910 millimeters from center to center here just as this one and i also went and i measured the front ones here and they are pretty much the same now here it's hard to measure correctly but i'm pretty sure they are also the same distance but Nick also noticed that the diameter here, at least the outer diameter of the old links, is bigger than the outer diameter of the new links. Which means if we want to use these, we can't use our poly bushings. And here these come with rubber already installed. So you know what? We're not going to use these. At least not for the rear. Because we're going to clean these up. There's nothing wrong with them. And we're going to replace our bushings with the poly ones, which it's about time to take out. Sorry. These aren't split. They are split. What do you mean they're not split? Here. They are split. So where's the mounting? Oh. Okay. So actually. <laughs> okay. So I told that we had new ones of these, but that was probably in the front sway bar kit. We have new ones for these. So for the rear ones, we're going to have to clean these and paint them. Well, for once, I can tell my hands are cleaner than Nick's. <laughs> yeah. And his face, too. <laughs> my face? <laughs> yeah. Good job, Nick. Okay. Well, we are closer to the end of the day here, and I need to drive Nicole as soon to his mom's, because he's at school tomorrow, but he's going to be back next week, and we're going to continue. So we might even continue a little bit more today. But first, I want to make sure that we are ready for everything else. So she's going to start putting the wheels back on the car, the rear wheels, because we need to drive it out without the sway bar. I'm working on the fuel lines, the securing part of them. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to take the car out. And if we have time, we're going to start cleaning up here. These, if not, we're going to start cleaning them in the next video. For sure, we're not going to assemble them. So can you need can you put all the new parts in this box so we don't lose them? Okay, hardware, 
don't lose it because you're gonna have a week and i know someone who works here all the time so he might lose your hardware so keep it safe okay and these are done now so there's one there that holds the line the lines and then there's four more here and here nicole didn't close this as we asked him to oh i didn't put a boat here <laughs> nobody told me that i have to put a boat so yeah you know put the boat here and we're done is it comfortable yeah <laughs> especially with the seat not fastened oh the seat is not fastened yeah your suspension is a little bit too high yeah yeah <laughs> you're in the air you are still as we say in bulgaria we have a, we have an expression that when uh, somebody's license is suspended or whatever we say that your license is on jack stands mm -hmm. so right now your car is on jack stands still mm -hmm. okay well that's gonna be everything for today guys uh, nick is gonna put the car down now and he's gonna drive it out because i'm gonna use the garage for the next four days actually well it's monday today today is victoria day so it's long weekend so it's monday so nick is going back to his mom for tuesday wednesday thursday friday and then he's coming back next weekend and then we're gonna continue with this car now i'm getting more excited i don't know about you but i'm really getting excited about working now that i know that we have all the suspension parts and everything and uh we're, yeah we're making steps towards putting it together i'm looking forward to putting the interior together but we're not gonna do that until we paint the car yeah because it's gonna be a lot of sanding and it's gonna be dusty so we don't want to, the interior to be super dusty we're gonna have to take out the seats as well before that yeah. because they are dusty but they're washable now but if we put uh, bondo dust in them they're gonna become super bad so that's why the interior is still gonna be like that but uh, yeah the suspension is gonna come together and then we need to do a little bit of work in the engine we have the the power steering pump hanging on its hoses so we don't know if it is working we don't know why it was disconnected maybe it stopped working and they just disconnected it i don't know we might get rid of it completely because these cars honestly why does it need power steering many people do that some of the miatas come without power steering right i don't know maybe i think so anyways it's optional so we might even get rid of it if it doesn't work but at least we have to remove it <laughs> if whatever and we need to put the front end together we actually need to do that before we paint the car we need to put at least test fit once the front bumper to make sure that everything fits before we paint the car and we realize that we have to and cut and weld and do something the lights and the panels above them yeah we can actually assemble the lights and just the panels can stay out like we can put them test fit them and then we can take out the panels to paint them so yeah that's exciting i'm i'm really looking forward to the next few videos and that's gonna happen more rapidly i guess because nick is gonna spend a lot more time here with me now and that's great he started a weekend job that is close to me so every weekend he needs to be here <laughs> we tricked him anyways okay guys uh, that's everything for today though so we're gonna see you in the next one thanks for watching commenting subscribing sharing and supporting the channel and we'll see you soon bye bye with dirty hands <laughs>